For today's experiment, we're going to compare the azimuth mount mode and the equatorial mode and see if if they really make a difference. You know, the, the idea is, is that in EQ mode, the sea star is able to track more efficiently. And so you don't have quite as much field rotation. You can take longer exposures without having problems with star trails and misshapen objects and things. And so today I wanted to compare the two so that we can really see if there's a big difference and which one is easier. So the advantage of the azimuth mode is that it's so easy to set it up with the C-Star. All you do is you screw on the tripod that came in the kit with the C-Star, you plop it out somewhere, level it, you're good to go. Well, with the EQ mode, there's a few more steps involved. For one, you can't, well, I guess depending on where you live, you could use the tripod that comes with the Sea Star. But for the majority of people, the tilt on the Sea Star pointing towards the equator makes it unstable on that smaller tripod. So um, the majority of people, I'm, I'm guessing, have to use a different kind of tripod. So that requires getting a second tripod. Um, some people need a wedge or some kind of mount that is fluid that can can rotate and move and fine tune when it's doing its aligning. And so there's some disadvantages to the EQ mode in that regard. So you're investing more money in gadgets to go with your C Star. Plus it takes a little bit more time to set up um, other than just plunking it out there on the tripod it came with. And so I want to compare to see what the differences are. And I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to image um, one of the most beautiful galaxies. And it comes in really brilliant because it's so close to us, it's big. Um, I'm going to do the Andromeda galaxy. It's just now coming back up into the night sky for me in my area. And so I haven't imaged this one since last fall. And I'm not going to do any of the framing and enlarge the screen because when you have the field rotation, you see that a lot in the corners of the images. And so I don't want to do the framing and enlarge the screen that I'm imaging for Andromeda because I want to be able to compare and a lot of that comparing will be in those corners of the image. And so it's just going to be, you know, point and shoot at Andromeda and we're going to compare them. Now, I know that the majority of viewers probably already know about EQ mode and azimuth mode and how to change it in the C star, but I wanted to cover that for those newbies who are just joining us. So you're going to um, launch your app for the C-Star and you're going to connect to your C-Star. I have named mine the College Gateway just so that it matches my YouTube channel. But um, some of you, it might just have the number of your C-Star as the identifier. But it shows a picture here of the C star at the top. If you have an S30, it would probably, it would show a picture of a white C star, but mine is the S50. If you look right above that to the right, you can see that there's a little icon there right next to the battery icon, and it shows the C star is in EQ mode. And it, and you know that because it's tilted. Now, um, to change that, all you have to do is go into the settings scroll down to the advanced features and then scroll down to the mount mode right here and you see over on the right hand side it says eq mode that's telling me what it's currently in so when i click on that my c star is in the house and set up just on the counter so we're not going to worry about the uh, degrees and all of that stuff in this video 
but um, I'm just going to show you how to switch that from EQ mode back and forth to azimuth mode. So this is the screen you come to, and in the top right-hand corner, there's this red word switch. And if you click on that, it comes up and it says, oh, you're, we're switching that, and it's been successful. And then you have to put the C-star, if it's not already in the home position, you have to put it in the home position to switch the mode before you start imaging. So you click OK. It thinks for just a few minutes. Now at the top in the center, you can see it says AZ Alt Mode or Alternative Azimuth Mode. Uh, and then when you go back to the main home screen of your C-Star, now you see that icon right above the picture of the C-Star next to the battery. It shows it standing tall and up and upright. And so that's an indicator to you that you're in azimuth mode. And um, of course, you can go into the C star, go to the advanced features, do any of the aligning and things here. Um, I haven't done them in a while, so I probably should do that. Um, but that you can still do everything in the settings now that you need to to prepare for azimuth mode. And so that's an indicator on the screen which mode you're actually imaging in. So to set up for this experiment, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a plan. And I've already set it up, um, but I can kind of show you how I did it. I, I did create a plan. I named it Andromeda. And then I, when I had the blank plan, whoops, I went into here and I clicked on the objects. I clicked on Andromeda and it did the locate the target. And then it comes up with the Andromeda galaxy. Uh, you can add it here into your plan. Um, I did not do any of this framing that is right here, which would make it so I could rotate the screen or uh, enlarge it so that it captures the entire image of Andromeda. I didn't do any of that because I want it to remain consistent. I'm going to use the same plan both nights. And so um, it's just going to do Andromeda from about one o'clock in the morning until five in the morning. Um, that's not an exact thing, but you know we could look in the plan to see what those are, but it, it doesn't matter if I'm doing them so that they're consistent. So I'm going to first do the EQ mode, mainly because my C-Star is out on the tripod and ready to image. And it's already set up in EQ mode from some images I was doing earlier this evening. And so I will start with the EQ mode. And then tomorrow night, as long as the clouds cooperate, I will go into the C-Star, change it to azimuth mode and we will just image using the plan so that we can capture the same exact thing. So it's the next morning and I wanna go in and review what image last night during the plan while I slept. And so I am in the C-Star app. I'm just gonna click on my album, gonna ask if I wanna keep the current selection and I do. And then I click on the little um, C star in the top center. And when I click on that, it's going to show me the album. And right below stargazing album, you see there's an M31 and an M31 sub. The subs folder contains every one of the exposures it saved last night. And it was 1,053 um, exposures it saved throughout that plan that we ran last night. So that's quite a few exposures. And then if I click on the M31, um, I do have a couple other images in here that I took while I was setting it up. But the one that ran with the plan is the one on the far left. And if I click on that, we see a picture of the Andromeda galaxy and what it took last night during the plan. Now, remember, this one was in EQ mode. And so... Um, that's how we're going to compare. 
is I will take a still image of this after we get it all completed and we will put them side by side so that we can compare. And as we compare these, just for clarification, when I was imaging in EQ mode, I did set it to the 10 second exposure rate so that it would be the same as when I was doing the azimuth mode. When you're in azimuth mode, um, you tend to do them on 10 second exposure rates because the tracking isn't as good. So I wanted them to be consistent. So both of them are using the 10 second exposure rates. This is the first image we took and we know it's an EQ mode um, because there is a little icon in the bottom left of the image when you save it to your phone. There's a little, that little icon of the telescope being at an angle. And so you can always tell from your images if you save, if you don't crop out that little indicator at the bottom, you could always tell which mode you've taken this image in. This image did save 174 minutes of the plan that we ran last night. So that's almost three hours out of the four hours that we imaged. And that's not an exact to the numbers or, you know, scientifically exact, but about three hours of the four saved. So we did drop some uh, exposures along the way, but we did get the majority. So probably 75% or so of the time that we were imaging last night while I slept, we were imaging Andromeda. All right. So it's a day later and this is the azimuth um, recording or image. And you can see that it turned out terrible. And what really happened is in the middle of the night, a storm rolled in and the sky clouded over. So it, it would take occasional exposures throughout that four hours, but it only ended up saving uh, three, uh, 300 exposures. And they weren't great exposures because they had thin clouds and you know, it just wasn't great. But the reason I wanted to include it is you can really see the field rotation in this image. In those corners especially, um, the, the four hours of field rotation is very evident in this image. And since that's what this video is about, that's why I included it. I do plan on running this plan again when the sky is clear so that we can compare the actual image of Andromeda but I included it so we could see those field rotations because they are very apparent in this image. So it is the next morning and we were successful last night recording using the plan. This is the azimuth mode um, that we recorded. You can see that there's a big rotation in just the object's position in the sky over three nights. So the object on the left was night one. The object in the middle is night two when the clouds rolled in. And object number three is the third night. But you can see that the positioning in the sky is drastically different just over three nights too. But um, the field rotation is very apparent in this image. Um, I have brightened it a little bit in the software I use to create the videos just so that you can see that field rotation a little more clear. I didn't do any editing or enhancing other than that. I didn't change anything other than brighten the image itself so that you could see those distinct lines where it rotates in those corners. It's very similar to the night before. It is a little bit larger because it did image more time. It saved 120 something minutes, uh, 124, I think. I can't really read it from the software I'm creating and recording with, but um, 120 something minutes. The first image on the far left was 172 minutes. So the EQ mode was definitely more efficient um, and saved a lot more of those exposures than the azimuth mode. Um, 
the azimuth picture on the far right. Um, there's a couple of things that are so different about it. The rotation in the corners is very evident. If you were to crop this picture down, you would have to pretty much crop it down to the galaxy right there in the middle. You wouldn't have hardly any outline around it if you were to crop out that field rotation. And so that's some of the advantage of using the EQ mode and why it's um, preferred. Um, the, the picture is tilted to the right now, or I guess it's really to the left because now that band is turning up towards the top of the picture now instead of rotating clockwise. It looks like it's rotating counterclockwise. Um, but the field rotation, if you were to crop that out, you would crop out into that object. And so the azimuth mode really does make a difference um, here in the next few days. As long as the skies cooperate, we're going to do another experiment with the azimuth mode, trying to reduce that field rotation. And so if you're interested in that, you may want to um, check back with our channel. Um, if you want to subscribe, that's fine. Or just check back, you know, whatever works for you. But we are hopefully going to come up with some solutions for those who don't want to use the EQ mode or for some reason can't use the EQ mode. Uh, we're going to do some experiments trying to reduce this field rotation so that you could still get usable objects. You know, some of the objects, it, it wouldn't matter. Um, if you're going to record big, long sessions like this, which is ideal because we want to gather those exposures, you know, if you need to crop out clear to the center of the image itself and that object is any bigger than a pinhole, you would crop out that picture. So there are some objects that it probably wouldn't matter on, but the bigger the object, the more that field rotation cropping becomes an issue. You know, when the EQ mode was first coming out, I debated whether or not I was going to even use it because I'd only use the azimuth mode, of course, and it worked just fine for me. And I thought, oh, I'll just crop that out. And it really wasn't an issue. So I wondered why I would ever use EQ mode and, and care that much because I almost always was cropping down the images that I was taking. But now that I've used EQ mode, I definitely see the advantages in using EQ mode. And that's what I mainly image in. But I am going to be doing another experiment here in the next day or two. Get that recorded and edited and uploaded. So if you want, are interested in some experiments to reduce that field rotation in your images, stay tuned. And like always, we're thankful for everybody that watches the channel. And we are always wishing clear skies to everybody. Thanks for watching.